What's mobbing with it, man? God bless y'all in Jesus' name. Y'all know what time it is. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Let's break it down and get into this today, man, and really understand uh, truly what it means to draw near to God. Um, For one, we have to understand that we must have faith and we must draw near to God in the consecration, like being consecrated in prayer, fasting, you know, all of these things. Like we need to understand what it truly means to draw near. Like we have to make an effort. That's where when it comes to making an effort to draw near. See, we may complain about our circumstances. We may point fingers about, you know, who did what and what's going on in life and all of these things. But at the end of the day, are we truly drawing near to God in these situations, in these circumstances? Are we truly hitting our knees in prayer and crying out to the Lord for the sake of getting closer and spending more intimate time with him? Not just if we're going through a storm, not just in whatever life may throw at us, but truly worshiping the Lord in prayer, drawing near to him through faith that we have in him, through the communication, which is through prayer, and even through the studying of the word, drawing near to God. If we are intimately in love and desire to be closer to somebody that we look at as a loved one or somebody we deeply care for, let's think about it in the realm of at the end of the day, we are making an effort to get to know them, to know their deepest secrets, their emotions, whatever it is, we are trying to truly know all of the attributes of that individual. We need to understand that at the end of the day, drawing near to God, drawing near to the Father is us being able to spend intimate time with him and truly see and, and know who he is and grow closer to him. In doing so, he is drawing near to us. He enjoys the fellowship that we have and we need to be mindful of that in our everyday lives and what we claim to say we're doing when we're drawing near to the Lord you know what I'm saying and what it takes to truly draw near to the Lord and understanding for you to want God to be closer to you you have to make the effort to be closer to God like you have to show the effort and take the action and do all that you can to truly draw near to the Father and we have to understand what it means when it's saying cleanse your hands, you sinners. Well, we know the only way that we can be cleansed of our sins is through being washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. The sacrifice that Christ made for the sake of us being able to be reconciled unto the Father and have fellowship. That is the only way that we can be cleansed of our sins. And we need to truly understand in the manner in what that means. And we have to truly understand when it speaks on even being like calling somebody double minded. That is somebody who is undecided, like for better words. And I'm saying like they're not sure. God wants us to be in fellowship with him. Does he need us to? No, he doesn't need us to do anything. But the fulfillment and the connection that he has with us and the intimacy when we spend and truly making that effort to draw near to him and knowing that he's drawing near to us. Think about how much God loves us. Not only did he give his only begotten son and the sacrifice that Christ made for the sake of our sins and so that we can be reconciled onto the father, but even more so the love that he has for us. And as we begin to make effort and show action that we are trying to draw near, that he is drawing near to us. That he is revealing himself more and more and showing us more and more through prayer, through the faith that we have and through the studying of his word and who he truly is. And we need to be very mindful of that, man. And, and to be honest with you, I truly like when I begin to think about it, man, it just makes me in awe that somebody would care 
meaning the Lord, like in the way that he cares, like I I could say, like, I know my, my wife loves me. You know what I'm saying? Like my, my daughters, they love me. You know, my brothers, they love me. My sisters, they love me. But the love that the father has for me is so much greater and, and it, it fills me with joy and peace to know that even in my darkest moments when when I was a wretched sinner, that the father had a calling for me. And through the hearing of the gospel and being touched by the spirit and repenting for my sins and coming on to salvation by accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior. Like it brings so much joy to know that I'm in the flock and that I'm a part of the body and knowing that I have somebody who loves me when I was undeserving of it. I'm undeserving of the father's love. You know what I'm saying? I'm undeserving. I was a wretched sinner. You know what I'm saying? I'm undeserving of these things. But due to who the father is and the love he has for his children, it's crazy and it blows my mind sometimes when I sit back and think that, like, the way the Lord loves me as well as, you know, the way he loves his children. But I still sometimes be tripping out like, man, Lord, thank you. And just even when it comes to understanding that it isn't enough for us as believers to just try to resist the devil, resist temptation, re resist the world, you know, do do the best that we can. No, we can't do that alone. That's why God calls us to draw near to him. And drawing near to him and consecrating ourselves in prayer is also as well as asking for guidance. We can't claim we can't claim to love the father and say that we are here to do the Father's will if we are not communicating and asking what His will is for our lives and truly hearing His voice and accepting the guidance that He gives us through this narrow path. We can't say that we truly love the Father if we're not spending that quality time with the Father to have and build and grow and develop that intimacy that truly He longs to have for us and that we should long to have with Him. Once again, He doesn't need us. He chose us when we were undeserving of this. And I'm thankful, man. And, I, and I'm thankful that God, you know, saved me, you know what I'm saying, from my sinful nature. And that he called me to be a part of the, the flock, man, and, and be called his, his child. Because I can think back at times when I was, I was truly a heathen. I, I was wicked. I did things that I'm not proud of. You know what I'm saying? I did things that disgust me today. You know what I'm saying? Just how evil I was taking advantage of individuals and just being driven by sin, just greed, just all of the things that I used to partake in that I look at now and it disgusts me. And I'm just thankful that the father had love for me at times when I couldn't even love myself. I didn't have no love for myself. The way that I was living my life, I couldn't say I cared for myself or I loved myself because I was willing to throw my life away. And life is such a precious gift that God has granted us. And at times when we were separated from him and we were his enemy and at the end of the day we were wretched sinners, we were throwing our lives away. We were daily committing suicide. We were willing to commit suicide for the sake of the sin and the temptation and the pleasure of the flesh and seeking that. So I thank God in the moment that he called and the spirit fell upon me and the repent for my sins and confessing them and truly acknowledging Christ to be my Lord and Savior and just being reconciled onto the Father through Christ, the blood of Christ, and just even thanking Christ for the, for the sacrifice. Man, it's it, honestly like, it's crazy to know that at times this brings me such peace and joy that I never thought I could have. Like that peace that in the word when it talks about, a, it'll bring peace that surpasses understanding and it's like, I'll be at peace in moments or at times in life that I could never comprehend. And I never like could even understand like, man, <laughs> life is throwing everything at me right now. But I'm at peace, Father, and knowing that I'm your child and you, you're going to take care of me. You're going to get me through this. You're going to give me the strength, the endurance. You're going to guide me. You're going to navigate me through this. And just even when I'm not going through something along them lines, the peace and joy he gives me and just understanding when I wake up and just being able to laugh and be happy and just, you know, throughout the day, you know what I'm saying? To know, like, regardless of anything, 
like I'm a child of the Most High. And that wasn't by my doing. I didn't choose this. I never chose, I never chose God. He chose me. And so I just want to put that out there today, man. I, I love y'all. You know what I'm saying, man? Y'all have a blessed day in Jesus' name, man. Y'all continue to press and draw near to Christ, man. Draw near to the Father, man. Grow intimately with the Father. Get to know the Father. Through your faith, through your prayer, through reading of the word to truly understand as the Lord begins to reveal himself and grow closer to you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, man, y'all be blessed.